Today we're making this stylized lava material. And while this material graph might look very intimidating and complex, really it's doing the same thing three times. We're making a texture. That firstly, we're making it in orange. Then we're making it in red with a smaller scale. And then with an even smaller scale, we're making it in red again. And then these nodes just mix that together with a couple of cleverly made masks. So let's rebuild this. If you want to follow along or just play around with the material yourself, as usual, down below in the description, there's a link to my Patreon where you can download this entire project file. So we're going to start by making the orange tracks. And the key thing there is going to be a Voronoi texture. Do make sure you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled because it's going to make this entire process a lot easier. We're going to change this node from using F1 to distance to edge. And immediately you can see this is starting to look like you can use it to form cracks. And that is because you can. But these lines are a little too straight and a little too structured still. So we're going to displace those by using a noise texture. So first and foremost, we're going to add some mapping coordinates to this. And then with those same mapping coordinates, we're going to add a noise texture. And then out of the noise textures vector, we're going to get a mix color node. And the bottom color is going to be the output from our mapping node as well. Now that we're mixing these two together, we can use that output to then set the vector for the Voronoi texture. And you'll be able to see it majorly distorts it. We're going to decrease that by quite a bit so that it's a little wiggly. You might want to play around a little bit with the scale here of the noise texture. Don't make it too strong. So if, if you scale very, very high, you get these very detailed wiggly lines. That's not what we're looking for. So keep the scale relatively low, but enough to distort it a little bit. And then with the factor of this mixing node, you can also influence how distorted your lines get. The output of that is going to go through a color ramp where we're going to use this to invert it. So we're going to put the white on the left side and the black on the right side. So if we preview this, we can now see this gets inverted. And like this, we only have the cracks. You want to move your principal BSDF quite a bit away because there's a lot of nodes going on here. That color ramp then goes into a second color ramp. And this is going to be actual colors we're going to be using. So for the time being, I'm going to put this into the emission of our principal BSDF shader. And we're going to set the black to being black. And the white is actually going to be our orange color. Because we're using an emissive material here, you'll want to set the base color to being black. We'll set the roughness to being at one so that there's no reflection here. And we can already see our lava looking cracks here. So this is the main thing that we're going to be doing. We are going to copy this entire setup and use it to also make these smaller cracks and then blend them together. One thing that I do like to do though is coming off this Voronoi texture, we're going to add a copy of this color ramp. And when we preview this, we can see if we now move this black value a little more to the right, we get a bit more of a gradient. If we then put that into a color ramp again, you can see we have thicker lines. Decreasing the brightness of that orange color a little bit, we can then mix these together with a mixed color so that there's a little bit of a glowing effect. So now you can see there's a bit of a glowing effect around our cracks and you can influence how strong that effect is by messing around with this color ramp over here. If we set this mixed color node to being add, the effect becomes even a little bit stronger. So I do like the look of this. And then you can set the factor all the way up to one. Do be aware though, that this is also going to increase the brightness of the original cracks you have made. So you might want to play around a little with the colors to make them work very well. Personally, what I did, uh, and which you can do uh, very, very easily, is coming off your second color ramp that's generating the glow and getting a vector math to subtract the top color ramp off of that which will give you a mask that takes away the original cracks and only leaves the glow and if we then use that as the fact of adding node 
you can see that it is already uh, a little bit more subtle. You can also, if you want to, usually you don't do this with materials, but decrease the specularity because obviously this is not going to be reflecting anything. This is something that's purely generating light. As a matter of fact, you could just do away with the principal BSDF altogether and just make it an emission shader because that's all that this is really going to do. And congratulations, this is basically it. We're going to copy over this entire setup now and we're going to make the smaller red colored cracks. I'm going to leave out the tiniest red colored cracks because they're the same process of mixing and matching these things. And it's kind of redundant to cover it again. So if you want to check that out in more detail, again, project files are available. And now we can start playing around with the scale of our Voronoi texture, making it a lot smaller. You'll see that we'll also need to impact the scale of the noise texture because it's still distorting the same amount over a smaller texture now. We'll want to increase the scale for that as well and maybe play around a little with this value. You can also, to add a little bit more detail to this smaller one, play around a little bit with the roughness and the detail slightly distorted maybe but don't go overboard just leave it at a very very low number and obviously we're going to change these colors to being a more red color and somewhat darker which gives us our smaller cracks now the way we mix these together is actually quite interesting because we're going to uh, be using a mix color node but if we just mix these together that's gonna look kind of bad what we want to do is we want to mask out the red cracks wherever there is a orange crack luckily we have a black and white mask for wherever we have orange cracks so we can just use this as the factor for this mixing but that's not quite working right so there's two things we can do here is we can just change around the inputs and now we get what we want or we could uh put a invert in between here and that would also uh, fix that you might also want to try using the bottom ramp we've made that's generating the glow to use as the mask for mixing because that'll probably look a little bit better now everything is fully cracked though and we'll probably want some spots where we don't have cracks so that we have number one it'd be less obvious that this is both the same noise texture generating both of these things and number two it just generally looks nicer if the pattern is broken up every so often so for that we're going to come in off this vector mapping node again which actually in this specific case we don't really need this to be a separate set of nodes so what we can do is we can delete those and just reuse the ones from here that saves you a bit of headache messing around with multiple nodes. Anyhow, uh, when we drag off that again, we're going to add a new noise texture with the mapping node uh, going into the vector. And there we're going to play around with the scale a little bit until we feel like this is useful for a mask. And to nobody's surprise, this is going to go into a color ramp because everything we do go through a color ramp almost. And we're going to use that to increase the contrast and make this mask a little sharper. Do keep in mind your nodes should be somewhat organized because we're working with a lot of them here. So we're going to put these up here, actually. Because there's a lot of different ways to use this kind of mask. The way that we're going to be using here is we're going to use the output from this, multiply that, a normal one, not a vector math one. And we go through that multiply node first before we go into our color ramp that's giving us the red color you get to see that we suddenly have holes in here obviously we need to do that with the version that generates the glow as well so let's add a redirecting node here to make things a little simpler and now we've got this texture with holes in it so looking at our final composite that's starting to look like what we want now you can add a third tier to this obviously with even smaller for noise scale and even smaller noise scale to add those little extra details that you saw in the render from the beginning of the video but i think you get the basic idea now so we're going to do one last thing and that is specifically if you're using this in blender for rendering and you want your lava to flow like you saw at the beginning of the video 
we can scroll the UVs. So the way we do that is simply here in our texture coordinates, we're going to change from generated to UVs, which shouldn't change the texture all that much. Then we're going to simply add a value and that's going to go through a combine XYZ in the X or the Y direction. It doesn't really matter, which we'll put into the location. Then the value for this, we're going to put in hashtag frame divided by 100. And now if we play, we'll see the entire thing is scrolling by. So add a little bit more dynamic movement to that. I personally like to then divide this further by five more times before dragging it into a sign node. And that's going to be used for the Y coordinate location. This way, it's moving in this direction, but it's also swaying back and forth a little bit, as you can see. It's very slow, but it does give it a little bit more of a lively movement to it. And basically, that is it. You've got a stylized lava material now. As I said, this looks very complicated. In this case, it's mostly badly organized. It's really not that bad. So if you've enjoyed this, do subscribe to the channel for more content like this and leave a like to support the video. And I'll see you all back in the next video.